So demo four, uh, we're going to show you how to access the dark web. So demonstrate how cyber criminals communicate with ransomware groups. So we've got here, we've installed uh, the Tor web browser. Um, and so you can see that, you know, this is just a standard web browser that you can open up, you know, a address bar and then start um, uh, accessing the dark web. So you can access the standard web as well, um, but you've also got these .onion websites and basically every domain on the dark web ends in .onion. This particular website here, they typically have these random complicated domain names. Um, this particular one here is a, a list of ransomware groups websites. So some of these are, are already expired, but um, a bunch of them, as you can see, a whole bunch of threat actor websites where you can um, go and have a look at the third party security breaches. You can also go and download the data from them. So if we have a look at this Black Cat uh, um, Tor website, um, Tor can be extremely unstable and extremely slow. Um, so when that loads, that'll basically come up with this page here, and this is the Alpha um, Threat Actor website. And you can see here all of the different companies that have been breached and are being extorted through these threat actors. And you can see that you, know, you can navigate through 63 pages of companies that have been breached by this particular threat actor group, and they're being extorted. So you can also see things like how many files are being uploaded uh, within these um, the breached uh, organizations profiles and you can see here it's over 200 gigs in this particular case so that's how we um, access the dark web um, when you uh, get infected by ransomware or you're getting extorted, typically they'll give you a communication channel to start communicating with the threat actor, ultimately so you can start getting extorted and uh, negotiate the extortion payments. <clears throat> so this is one of the older, but one of the biggest um, back in the day uh, threat actor um, groups, Conti. And so this is their recovery service. So once you get breached, you upload uh, the ransom note um into their portal and then that drops you into a chat channel with the threat actors so you can see here uh the threat actor on the left hand side hello are you ready to negotiate um the victim on the right hand side negotiate really um the threat actor that is totally real if we will not receive the reply from your side we will start contacting all of your clients and employees to notify them about the breach and on how you maintain privacy and information security and on how you value their data. So you can see that as soon as you start to communicate with them, the extortion begins and they start putting pressure on you to, to get you to pay. So you can see that in this case, um, this is the victim. So please don't, let's talk about what you've got, and what you need. And then the extortion amount comes in. So the demand for the decryption tool and removing the stolen data from our servers is $4 million. If you do not need the tool and you've already recovered your data, um, typically because a lot of organizations will have um, uh, backups that they can restore from and therefore they don't necessarily need to recover the data, but there's still the problem that the data has been leaked. So they say, if you've already recovered your data, let us know and we'll give you a big discount um, for us to basically delete the data from our systems. Uh, the data pack example and parts of the file listing will be provided later today. And you can see here, they've then provided a full listing of the files that were stolen um, from the organization. And they've given a sample of a couple of the files just to prove that um, they have the data from the organization. Um, they also try and build up a level of trust. Um, so you can choose any two files from the listing. We'll discard them as proof that the files were really stolen. You can also send two files for free decryption, basically to prove that they can decrypt and provide you the files, the raw files back. 
Um, they start putting on pressure, so you better do this ASAP. Um, you can see a couple of days went past, any update, we need your reply to by tomorrow or else we'll start taking action, ultimately meaning they'll start leaking the data. So basically, if you're going down the path of uh, paying a extortion or a ransom, they typically want that in Bitcoin or some sort of cryptocurrency. Um, again, ultimately, the reason why they use uh, cryptocurrencies is to remain anonymous. So you're not depositing it into their personal bank account. Um, and the question typically comes up is, is it illegal to pay a ransom or an extortion? So at the moment, it's obviously uh, uh, recommended that in any situation possible, you don't pay ransoms or extortions because that's just... Uh, funding the threat actors to be able to go and break into more organisations and, and make the problem worse. Um, there are situations where, um, you know, some businesses don't have a choice. Um, so we've dealt with security breaches where an entire uh, small to medium business has had everything encrypted. Their IT provider told them that, uh, that their backups hadn't been working for six months and therefore they either shut their entire business down, you know, potentially lose their house, you know, for the small business, they, all the employees get um, let go, you know, that then causes major financial impacts. And, you know, for that particular one, the, the, uh, the ransom was about $7,000. Um, and therefore, you know, it, it makes more sense to be able to actually pay that to keep the business running. So, First step is to get a Bitcoin wallet. Um, that's basically sort of like you can think of like your, your bank account um, that gets stored um, on your phone in this case. So you can get, there's a whole bunch of mobile apps and you can see there's receive and se receive Bitcoin, uh, receive cryptocurrencies and send. Um, so to receive um, Bitcoin, you've got a, you've got a, uh, Bitcoin wallet with address, and you've also got a QR code so that you can actually scan it to be able to um, add money into your Bitcoin wallet. So these days you'll see that uh, Bitcoin ATMs are becoming much, much more prevalent. Um, they're quite common in shopping centers these days. And so you can see here, it says, just scan your uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin wallet QR code, and then basically you can start putting money into your Bitcoin wallet. So what happens when you don't pay your extortion? Uh, so if we have a look at another dark web website, so this is the Clop Threat Actor Group, and you can see all of the different companies that uh, they've breached over the years, a uh, long list of these. And also you can see archived um, companies who they've breached as well. So there's a huge amount of companies that uh, these groups are, are compromising and extorting to be able to, you know, um, get a chunk of that, you know, six to ten trillion dollar um, uh, revenue stream. So if we go into one of those companies and have a look at uh, their profile page. You can see they've got details about the organization. They typically always have the uh, domain name uh, posted on here so you know what company it is. You can see the revenue stream um, and that gives them an idea as to how much they want to extort you for. Um, so obviously if you're a small business, it's going to be a smaller amount. If you're an enterprise um, or a global organization, it's going to be quite a large amount. So then you can see here, they've given a file listing. Um, these PST files are things like your all of your emails um, that they've extracted. And then you can see these download links. So each of these download links are around uh, 700 megabytes each. So you can sort of think of, you know, roughly a, a movie's worth of data. And you multiply that by all of these links so you can actually just click on these links and start down, downloading uh, the data that was stolen by these threat actors. And you can see this goes on and on and on. And so this would add up to many terabytes of data 
that has been stolen from this organization. Um, and then they also uh, start getting some interesting files within uh, some of this data, things like passports, financial information, um, uh, you know, client contracts, those sort of things, and they actually post those uh, further down the page. So I won't go further down the page. It's, um, yeah, you can, you can basically download any of these files to be able to access their data because this company didn't pay um, the extortion in that case.